Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Need Dost. Before starting this video, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and switch on the bell icon for quick notifications. So let's start this video without any delay. In today's video, we are going to discuss about atomic physics. It's a simple and mark securing chapter in physics. It has a weightage of one or two questions. The second question will be applicate application to other other chapters in final need the examination. In today's video, the first topic is Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment. And first in this experiment, the main point is nucleus was discovered by Rutherford. Please don't confuse it with Chadwick. Simply remember, nucleus was discovered by Rutherford. And in alpha rays, alpha particle scattering experiment, we all know he had sent many, many thousands of alpha rays through a gold atom, gold foil. And he found majority of the alpha rays has passed without any deviation. Only few were deviated and exactly one of the rays came exactly opposite to the initial path. This is the peak. Majority of the alpha rays has passed without any deviation. Only few were deviated and the one is came exactly opposite. This is the whole scenario of the Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment and the conclusion given by him is most of the atom is empty. Next subtopic is distance of closest approach. Here it is related to the ray which is deviated exactly. In, initially, it is uh, initially let us assume it is traveling in straight path. It has reached near some element or some atom, and it is reflected. Up to which extent it has been traveled? See, initially it has come like this, and it has reached certain distance. By since uh, by this distance, it has moved back. It did it did not travel this distance. It did not go near. It reached certain distance that is close to the nucleus. Finding this nu this distance is called as distance of closest approach. This is an atom. This is the atom's nucleus, and this is the closest approach. To find that, simply you are using a law of conservation of energy. Potential energy plus kinetic energy initially is equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy final law of conservation of energy theorem. Remembering this solves many of the questions but in without any time waste we should we need to find that so we are following this process initially it's had it has potential energy zero and it has initial velocity u 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught z e z e by r square because it is the finding the energy by using electric 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 potential energy plus finally it has time zero kinetic energy because it is simply repairing back by solving this equation we will get r equals to distance of closest approach by this if they ask to find the volume of the nucleus simply we will use 4 by 3 pi r cube it will be approximate not exactly here we need to find r based on this relation potential energy plus kinetic energy initially equals to potential energy plus kinetic energy final Finally, volume of the nucleus is, is approximately 4 by 3 pi r cube. Another subtopic in Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment is fractional number of alpha particles scattered at an angle theta, simply represented by f. This topic is mainly needed for AIMS and as we know, NEET and AIMS are mixed as and considered as a single exam. We may not know whether it is given it will be given or not but let us keep an eye on this simply we need to remember this formula f equals to nt pi b square we are, i am going to describe this f is the fractional number of alpha particles scattered at an, at an angle theta n is the number of atoms per unit volume of gold foil p is the thickness of gold foil b is the impact parameter b equals to z1 z2 e square by 8 pi epsilon naught square kinetic energy into cos square theta by 2. You need not to remember this. 
by seeing this formula just don't get panic we have simple relations just remember this they may they may they will give directly the impact parameter value so simply will substitute here for idea i am saying the impact parameter formula z1 z2 is square by 8 pi epsilon naught square kinetic energy into cos square theta by 2 remember only this formula remember only this formula f equals to nt pi b square here again i am i will recall this once again simply remember this formula f equals to nt pi b square the terms in it are f is the fractional number of alpha particles scattered at an angle theta n is the number of atoms per unit volume of gold foil t is the thickness of gold foil pi all its constant we know b is the impact parameter coming to another subtopic of rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment is number of alpha particles scattered at an angle theta these two are interrelated but this is different question this it will be different question here let us assume n theta means number of alpha particles scattered at an, at an angle theta is equals to number of incident alpha particles into t means time by 16 into z1 z2 e square by 4 pi epsilon naught k into 1 by r square sine power 4 theta by 2 this is the formula for number of alpha particles scattered at an angle theta friends simply don't mug up this formula and don't become tensed or panic by seeing this formula we need not to remember this simply we we need to remember only one that the relation n theta is directly pro, inversely proportional to sine power 4 theta by 2 sorry we simply we should to remember n theta is inversely proportional to sine power 4 theta by 2 just remember this relation and this formula so we are done with this and to derive here is a one important note pointing here we are seeing that alpha particles are projected in this way alpha particles are projected in this way and this is the nucleus and this is the nucleus alpha particles are scattered in this way and if you see due to repulsion alpha particles following this trajectory it moves like this by making an angle theta with initial axis and this the relation between two alpha rays scattered is impact parameter we are representing here and to solve or to find the closest distance or velocity after repulsion simply we need to obey according to law of conservation of angular momentum initial angular momentum is equals to final angular momentum mub equals to mvr here m and m gets cancelled because of same alpha particles here so ub equals to vr we had got and again making another theorem according to law of conservation of energy sorry this is energy but not g according to law of conservation of energy potential initial potential energy is equals to final potential energy this is simply that law of conservation of energy that uh, energy is not neither be created nor be destroyed some postulates will be right, right? that postulates final result is initial potential energy equals to final potential energy here substituting the values initial potential is zero as we know initial kinetic energy is half mv square we know because they are moving with velocity u and final potential energy is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into z d z d by r and final potential final kinetic energy is half mv square this solving these equations let us assume this as one and let us assume this as 2 by solving this 1 and 2 we will get v equals to something and r equals to something this is simply a question we may we may solve some numericals based on this just for understanding i have explained a theory here another important topic is 
Bohr's atomic model of atom. Since childhood, we are hearing about Bohr, Bohr, Bohr. And finally, we got Bohr because of Bohr's atomic model. Simply, as we get bored, but we need marks and need exam, right? So let's make note of this topic too. Here simply, this is a nucleus with a charge Z E. This is the initial orbital N1, this one. Another orbital with N2. And this is an, uh, another orbital with N equals to 3. An electron jumps from higher state to lower state or lower state to up, above stage. There will be a change in energy. That is given as H nu. And Bohr's first initial postulate is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Z e into E by R square. This is R square, not R power R. R square is equals to mv square by R. Here, mv square, R, mv square by R is the centripetal force pulling the electron towards nucleus. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Z into E by R square is the energy of the electron at a particular in a particular orbit. Remembering this equation makes us easy in solving different ask differently asked questions. And another postulate is angular momentum is quantized. Simply remember this formula and this statement angular momentum is quantized because they may give a theory question based on the postulates. So they will give the statement angular momentum is quantized. And remember this formula MVR equals to NH by 2 pi. Another postulate is change in the energy is represented by H nu as we have discussed here. Don't forget to remember this formula more max. This will be coming in chemistry even physics. So don't remember this E2 minus E1 equals to H nu. Another thing is to find the radius of the orbit. Simply R equals to E naught H square by pi R E square into N square by Z. You need not to remember this whole scenario. In final exam, they don't confuse you with giving here 1 and giving here 1 or 2 in different options. They simply give this equation, this equation and same like this, like this. Another term will be relating to energy and another will be related to momentum. Simply they will give different different don't confuse with and don't get panic simply you make a mnemonic or maybe make a some idea on this formula simply make make uh, in r n square by z will be and in v z by n will be like that make some mnemonics or some thumbnails for making you to to sc score marks easily without any delay here r we need to find as Epsilon naught h square by pi r e square into n square by z. Simply remember this formula. Don't forget to remember. Don't forget to remember. 0 0.53 n square by z am strong units. And make a note here, units is also important. 0 0.53 n square by z. n square by z means r is directly proportional to n square by z n square by z need to remember this formula this relation to finding velocity of the electron in nth orbit is given by e square by 2 epsilon naught n 2 epsilon naught n into 2 epsilon naught h z by n which is equals to 2.18 into 10 power 6 z by n meters per second here make a note Units is also important. Remember this 2.18 into 10 power 6 z by z by n meters per second, which is, is also represented by c by 137 into z by n meters per second. For simple calculations, in final in uh, maybe in questions, they they may say that electrons are excited with the velocity speed of light. Then we can use this formula because or they may give in they may give in options without giving the value of without substituting the value of c simply they give numerical into c some numerical x into c and units meters per second at that time we can use this without time waste and coming to next we know omega omega equals to v by r 
or v equals to r omega remember this this will be coming in again in mechanics omega equals to v by r or v equals to r omega finding frequency from this free f equals to omega by 2 pi this will be coming in many times in physics frequency equals to omega by 2 pi and the time period t equals to 2 pi by omega we know frequency is the inverse of time time period t equals to 2 pi by omega and solving these three equations we get t square is directly proportional to r cube this is most important this will be coming many times t square is directly proportional to r cube and we get this even in gravitation too here potential energy p is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon on z into e by r it is simply 27 point minus 27.2 z square by n square and the units is electron volt minus 27.2 is z square by n square in electron volt and kinetic energy k equals half m square that we know 13.6 z square by n square and the units is electron volt same 13.6 z square by n square and the total kinetic energy that is the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy is given by minus 13.6 z square by n square in electron volt minus 13.6 minus 13.6 z square by n square in electron volt here we they may ask the ratio between potential energy the ratio between potential energy kinetic energy and total energy they may ask the relation the ratio relation between these simply it will be minus 2 is to 1 is to 1. We know 27.2 is the double of 13.6. As here, potential energy is negative and the total energy is also negative. Kinetic energy is only the positive one. Minus 2 is to 1 is to minus 1. This is the ratio between potential energy, kinetic energy, and total energy. Coming to another formula, E2 minus E1 equals to H nu. Simply rearranging that we get hc by lambda because we use c, nu equals to c by lambda formula, so we will get hc by lambda. Here, on deriving this m e by m e power 4 by 8 epsilon naught square h cube c into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square is equals to 1 by lambda. Simply, we are sending these two terms to this side and making only 1 by lambda this side. And substituting the terms in e2 minus e1 and sending hc here we get this and from this we are simply representing this m e power 4 by 8 epsilon naught square h cube c as constant and giving it as the value Rigbert's constant and giving it value 1.097 into 10 power 7 meter inverse 1.097 into 10 power 7 meter inverse and we need to remember this formula 1 by lambda equals to r into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square 1 by lambda equals to r into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by r n2 square and this value r equals to 1.097 into 10 power 7 meter inverse in hydrogen atom we have simply in case of hydrogen atoms they may they will give a question that in a hydrogen atom in hydrogen atom we use different terms here 1 by lambda equals to r into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square simply we write for hydrogen atoms as lambda equals to 9 to 12 by 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. Oh